We are live. Hey, guys. It's Wednesday. I am Tim Bogart with The Ted Show. I am here with our every other weekish kind of series, Leadership Corner. I absolutely love this. I love the amazing Marion Weiler is here with us with Weiler International. Welcome. Thank you, Ted. So excited to be here. Well, I had, there you are. Can you? Very excited to have you. Uh, so we, you created, you came up with this amazing idea for Leadership Corner. I loved it. I think the words of wisdom that you impart on people are awesome. And so um, I'm especially excited about today's topic, uh, mental hygiene and what does that have to do with anything pretty much. Uh, but it's so important and it's especially important now since we've all had our mental hygiene in check during COVID and the quarantine. So uh, welcome to the show. Tell them a little bit about you and then let's take a, take a deep Thanks. dive into mental hygiene. I am really excited about this topic too. And, you know, the, the leadership corner overall, I feel has really increased importance. Like we've got it. There you go. Can you hear me okay? Does it work? Can you hear me? Ted? Ted? Yes. Okay. All right. So I. Yes. I, Your I, picture is. Your picture is off, but I can hear you. Okay. All right. So I, I picked this topic yes. this week because I feel that the mindset is so critical for anything that we are trying to accomplish. So I'm, I'm Hold really on, Mary. Internet connection is, must have be a challenge right now. Hang on. Is this better? I'm connect disconnecting my phone. Can you hear me? There. Uh, keep talking. I can All see right. you blink. So that's I just connected yes, my phone. I guess, I guess that's the beauty of being live, right? <laughs> you realize, you know, that you just kind of have to play with things. <laughs> so That's right. So, you thank know, you, but, Tony, for that. Tony, are you fine? We're good now. All right. All right. So keep yes, it real totally. here. But, I picked this topic this week because I feel that leadership and mindset is so critical, particularly right now, but in general, that you know, what when you kind of work on your inner peace, you can deal with whatever's coming your way in such a better way. And 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 really chaos, crisis or whatnot, at the end of the day, it's what what really happens within you that kind of determines how you're dealing with the situation and why you how you go about the goals and the things that you're trying to accomplish. And that's something certainly that I found true um, for myself. When I have the right mindset, then it's it's much more productive for me to overcome whatever I'm dealing with. And so I wanted to throw this topic out there because I feel that it's critically important Absolutely. for me. And I'm hoping that it will there will be a couple bits and pieces for others to kind of take out of out of this and help them get through um, whatever challenging situation that they're faced with right now, because everybody's dealing with something else. But for me, what I've realized really now more than than ever again is what you focus on turns into a feeling and that feeling turns into action and the action gets into a result. So if you have a positive or the same is true for negative, right? If you have a negative focus, if you focus on the things that really like the news and, you know, whatever is going on that creates fear and anxiety, then your feeling will will be negative your action will be out of fear or out of anxiety and the result that you're cre creating is is likely not going to be what what you're hoping to get so and and perhaps to kind of demonstrate that i was thinking i'll, I'll share a, a quick story or a scene really out of my life where, where that was um particularly true and and that was when a few years ago when when we relocated as a family from overseas and i was offered this this role that i always dreamed about this executive role with this leading global firm 
But what it meant was I had to move from Germany where my our friends were, my family was, and we moved to New York and it all seemed like this is the right thing to do and I was all excited. But when we came here, you know, we, we didn't really think about the impact it would have on everybody, on the children, the school, the lack of friends, the starting over and, you know, flying in on a Friday, coming and, and getting a car on a Saturday. And then on Monday, I started this role. And so did my husband start a new role. And what I didn't think about at that time was how challenging it really was for the children, how much of an impact that had. So before we knew it, we found ourselves in a situation where one of our children refused to speak, in fact, for nine months. So we were working with the school and the other one had like somewhat of like anxiety attacks because of all of this change. And so what happened and, and the point I'm trying to, to get across here is what happened is it's very easy to get overwhelmed. It's very easy to let the negative thoughts and whatever, you know, what's going on in our mind to say, why, why did we make this decision, right? Regretting this decision or saying, well, is it really all about me? Because for me, it was a dream, right? But for my children, it necessarily wasn't a dream. Their dream was to stay with their friends, stay with their family. And so being swept away by this you know, the, the negativity and the overwhelm of, oh my goodness, what am I going, how am I going to solve this, right? And that's that's really where where I realized it, it doesn't help you moving in the right direction if you focus on that, right? So right. You, you have to figure out a way how you can get your mindset back in a place where you can deal with all of this stuff. And meanwhile, you know, we both had these new roles and internal challenges and external challenges and and like just the mere fact of moving a family overseas with nothing for six weeks, sleeping on air mattresses, it can get very overwhelming at that moment. You start doubting yourself. And yes. that's you know, when I when I come back and that, this is how I've handled pretty much any challenging situation is my focus. That's where I go back to. And and when I say my focus, it's, you know, what, what I focus on expands, right? If yes. I focus on the positive, then positive things kind of get into my, my thinking and I can, I, I, I start feeling better. I start, you know, feeling less of that, that fear and anxiety. And of course the same is true if you are starting to, to, um, you know, kind of talk that, that the back talk that's happening in your head, right? All oh, the my, voices, the voices, right? The left, the right, the behind <laughs> the back, like everywhere. And then, you know, now in this situation where you have the news almost like rolling over all of us, right? Yeah. You have to be very careful while you, while you consume and what you let in, because even if you don't realize it at that very moment, it's your subconscious is really not in a place where, where it can reject anything, right? Whatever you, you bring is something that is saved perhaps subconsciously, right? You're not even aware of it, but it comes back yeah. in other places of not sleeping well, of overreacting on a situation that perhaps wouldn't wouldn't rock your world, but now it does, right? And it usually is not because of that very one thing that happened, but because it's an accumulation. It's a thought over a thought over a thought. So bringing it back to that focus, it's I am almost religious about what I focus on because I truly believe that it whatever I focus on will expand. And so the three questions that I ask myself and that I believe really shapes pretty much anything in my life and, and perhaps in yours to some extent as well, but it, it's consciously, it's unconsciously, and it really determines my destiny and, and people around me that I've experienced. And those questions are that the, the first one is what I have versus what I am missing. Okay. So, so what it's, it's that idea of gratitude. It's that idea of bringing it back into your conscious mind 
of, okay, let's take a look here. We're always very quick in looking at what we lost, right? We might not be able to go out. We might not be, we might not have a job. We might not know uncertainty f fueling in, right? And, and we, we, uh, might have lost certain things that we cling on to because we right. all as humans have this, this, um, you know, resistance to some degree of change. And we talked about that in the very first show, right? And we right. kind of want to go back into this box, right? We hear, we hear the conversations go, when are we going to be back to normal? When, when is this over? And I'm not so sure there will be a normal. I'm not so sure, you know, we, in fact, I personally don't believe there will be the same as it was before. I think there will be a new normal. There will be a new way, but it's, it's, very human to kind of wanting to go back to where we were, right? Let's get back into that box. But but really, is that box where where, where we want to be, or so is people that... people are asking me? They're messaging me. They're asking, is uh, are these three questions part of your definition of mental hygiene? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Yes, it is because because mental hygiene really for me believe is the the mindset I'm putting myself in and how I take care of my mind, right? And how I think shapes how I take care of my mind. So so th that that first question how can you be fully empowered if you're focused on on the things that are missing? Correct. Goes back to the why you focus on expands. So really going into and saying, okay, let's, let's take a look at this. What do I still have? And chances are when you start making a list, there's still a lot of things that you have, yes. right? That we all have, that we take for granted, that perhaps we haven't really thought about in a while. Perhaps we haven't even really enjoyed it. And part of that might be some relationships, right? Those of us that have, you know, live with anybody or children or whatnot, it's a whole new experience. Right. We both know each other better than we ever thought we would. It's so true. <laughs> and it could be good and it could be not so good, right? Depending on on um, where you are. But the the second question that that I look at is, what can I control versus what can I not control? And, and that's where the news comes back in. That's where, you know, the media is. That's where situations are happening that are conditions. Let's call them conditions that we can't change. You know, nobody was asking for this. Nobody, nobody is asking when they're losing their job. Nobody, you know, is asking for health issues. Nobody is asking for that. You can't control that. You can only try and shape what the decisions that you make, right? Now, now it is here. And so what are we doing with it? Are we sitting back? Are we waiting for the, for the new normal, the old normal, the box to appear again? Are we, are we kind of tied in fear and anxiety? Or are we right. really looking outside the box? Are we, are we talking to people that perhaps sometimes through brainstorming new ideas come up? Or maybe this person can help with X and I can help the same person with Y, right? Like one helping another, community, collaboration, those those types of things. So why do you think, um, Marion, why do you think it's so hard for people to not focus on what they can't control? Because it seems like we spend the majority of our time doing exactly that, focusing on the things that we cannot control that are out of our control. Yeah. Why, why do we why do we do that? Why are we why are we conditioned to do that? And then what do we begin to do to start unconditioning ourselves from that kind of behavior? It, in my opinion, it's a, almost a default setting. We live in a world where where the the news and the headlines and it has to one has to top another. Right. It's like the, the crazier, the better, the more, you know, eye opening and catchy. And even at the expense of being negative, 
the, the, it's almost perceived as, oh my goodness, there's another headline, right? We are living in a world like that. And you even see that in conversation when talking to people, some, and, and it's not their, necess, it's not their fault, right? And it's not even oftentimes their intention, but the conversation goes very quickly of like, oh my goodness, you know, how are you dealing with this? And, you know, what, what's, did you see that? Oh, that was on the news. And I can't believe this happened. I can't believe this. And now with social media, I can't believe this person did this. Right. So it's like, we are all very, we are all very quick in judging people. We're very quick in catching on to these news. And it really takes much more effort to say, wait a minute, to first of all, realize this is happening. Right. And then saying, what, how would that change a conversation if, if, as we are talking, Ted, for example, if we are like shifting completely into the positive, right? How would people perceive that? How, how would that be a, an eye opening moment to say, oh, oh, I thought, you know, that the, the thing that is on everybody's mind is X, Y, and C, right? Right. Right. How can that person not talk about that when that is what's all over? right? It, it's consuming us almost. And I think that's a big part of it. And making that conscious decision to say, okay, let's listen what comes out of our mouth. And that is true for me too. Sometimes, you know, your words become your reality. And when I catch myself saying something that I feel is not empowering, it's not, it's limiting who I am, who I want to be, what I'm trying to accomplish. I take a step back because now I'm starting to be conscious of that to say, wait a minute, that the words that come out of my mouth are not empowering me or not helping me in any way, shape or form to get me where I need to be because my condition is gonna remain the same until I make certain decisions that move me in a different direction. So let me ask you on the mental hygiene side, and I, I know you've got question three too, but people, people wanna know why you used that word hygiene because in your mental health, Yes. Um, uh, your mental state of mind, but hygiene is such a fascinating word to put with mental. So yeah. that they were asking why you why you put that together and sort of what you meant by hygiene. So, like last week when we talked about financial hygiene, the same is true for your for your mental state. It, it's a every day, every moment kind of thing. Nobody ever said, oh, I showered on Monday, right? I'm not going to shower again. It's a, it's a thing that happens frequently. It's a thing that you do ongoingly. And in my experience and people that I've experienced around me that, that practice that one day is you, you, you feel like you are on top of the world, you've got it all covered, you're, you're positive. And, and the next day you wake up with fear, anxiety, overwhelm. So it's it's the hygiene means, that, or, or the reason why I picked that topic is hygiene means it's something that you have to work on ongoingly. It doesn't go away. It, it's like it elevates you in a different level of consciousness once you really start paying attention to, but it's something that you do like you so, you know, in, in such a funny way. Uh, when we talked about financial hygiene, it's not the deodorant, right? You put on once a day, twice a day, three times a day, however often people do that. But it's it's the same with your finances. It's the same with your mental health, with how you think, how you take care, what you let into your head, consciously or subconsciously. Does, does that explain? Yes, absolutely. I think it's good for people to look at it as this is an ongoing thing. It's like when you allegedly, because I don't work out, but it's like when you work out, you have to continue to you have to continue yeah. to build that muscle. And if you don't continue to work on that muscle, you'll get some version of that, an atrophied version of that muscle. So you have to keep on it. You have to be in touch with it. Like you said, it's hygiene is something you have to constantly be keeping up with. It doesn't go away. So I, I love that. I think that's a that's a great uh, way to talk about mental health and mental mindset. 
Yeah, it's it's something that I I found certainly for myself true for a long time. I didn't give it the importance that it has. You know, we we are so easy to look at the business, the results, the bottom line, the you know, how do I how do I make this work? How am I successful? How am I, you know, growing my business, transforming my business, right? All of these things. But but what your mindset does to that, how your mental, and we, we hear a lot now of, you know, with, with exercising and, and eating healthy and all of those things. But when you are in a good place mentally, then you're open to really, at least that is true for me, I'm open to receiving these thoughts, right? Really trusting my intuition. And, and at that point, somehow, things start coming into my life because perhaps I'm open to it and and before I was and I'm not exactly sure because it's not a science it's more an experience very much so all right and, so I, I got you I, I had questions so I got you off yeah. I know there's a third question yes there is a third and that is what are you focused on pres past present or future and, and that is so interesting when you look at different cultures. And I, I by now, those of you that have been watching me the last few times know that I'm originally from Germany. So looking at a different culture, but even within, you know, one culture, it's some people are very much focused on the, the, the past. And, and I would say Germany is, is one culture where that is more, um, more the case than, than the U.S. culture. But the past, in my opinion, the, the past is important to learn from. We all make mistakes. That's, you know, a, a given. And the learning experience is what's key. So you're not making the same mistakes over and over. But it really doesn't help, again, moving forward where you want to be if you're living in the past, wishing everything back to where it was, you know, back to my box, like I said earlier. But the, the, the present moment is really what we have. And that is not easy. And I, it's not easy for me sometimes to just be in that moment. I need my watch to remind me, you know, now one minute, breathe, right? <laughs> Sit still breathe and just focus in on that one moment, on that breath. And that's uh, where yoga, exercise, all of these things come back into. But focusing on the present and then clearly defining what do you want your future to look like? And even that thought can create a certain level of anxiety right now when what is my future looking like, right? We all wish we have a we have a crystal ball that will tell us in a year from now. You know, we've transformed our business and things will be wonderful. And 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 or it, you know, nobody wants to hear any bad news, right? But right. the but you have to put in the work and you have to have the vision, so so you even know where you want to go. Right. And it, perhaps it's not as this is exactly what I'm going to do, but this is the end goal I'm trying to achieve. Yes. This is where I want to be, whatever that that, you know, is for anybody specifically. Like for me, it's building a, a community. It's building a, a, almost a community coaching type of model where where I can impact more people than on the one on one, where we can help each other um, grow in that aspect and, and remind like almost like an accountability partner, because that is something that is uh, so critical. It's easy to come off that path when it's just you. Right. It's so, true. It's very, it's easy to come off that path when you don't have the accountability. It's yeah. also, it's also easy to not even start when you don't have the accountability. And I think a lot of people, the starting part is what becomes difficult. It becomes yes. a challenge because they think they have to have it all ready and understand it all. And everything's planned out in step one before they even take the first step. Yeah. And that's where a lot of people, I think, mess up. Yeah, and, and I, I believe it's true for all of us to some extent. Sometimes it, it gets so big in front of us 
that that it gets so overwhelming that we can't do it. We're almost paralyzed. We can't do anything yes. with it. And that goes back into that that mental state to say, first of all, be be gentle with yourself. Take one step. Right. Who knows what the 10th step is? But if you have somewhat of a vision, what you're trying to do and then take one step at a time, the chances are that it, it it's going to go like this. Right. It's not going like that where you where where you make the step, you learn new things and then perhaps you go over here, you go over there, you'll learn different people along along the way. But it all starts with that one step. So. You know, and I can't remember what this American saying is with the elephant. You know, you eat it one bite at a time or whatever. <laughs> it's an American. But you it's got not, it. That's good. That's good. Is that what it is or did I it's, make that it's up? It's very, yes. It's, you're right <laughs> around it. It's perfect. Good. So it's, it, it is true that that one step goes into that same mindset of I can take the next step. I don't know how I'm going to make this all happen. I don't know how I'm going to how I'm going to go about this community based coaching membership that that vision I'm having, but I can take the first step. And that's really that I need to do. And in the meantime, that's where hygiene comes back in every day and every moment when I realize I'm I'm slipping away from this. Bring it back. And then I'm slipping away and I'm bringing it back. And, and that consciousness to even realize that you are in this pattern and then to bring it back, that's what I call hygiene. So a couple of things for me that help me keep a positive mindset or get a positive mindset. One is reading something positive, whether that is quotes, it is a book, something that you can learn, something you can grow. I almost need that like I never needed it before because it's I have to put myself into a positive mindset to to really envision what I'm trying to do here. And that's where my second step comes in connecting with like minded people. There's there's nothing that gets you off that path as quickly as if you are surrounded by people that perhaps you want to be polite, their friends, their family, but you can feel how the energy gets sipped out of you, right? So finding people, connecting with them, calling them, um, you know, writing with them and or being part of a mastermind. I've been part of masterminds over the last few weeks because it's a nice way to meet new people. They're all interested in the personal growth, professional growth arena, interesting, nice people that, that kind of I get the feeling that I am moving my growing in the right direction. Right. And then, like we said, you know, the exercise, the eating healthy, the tapping into your intuition and kind of understanding this is an opportunity. This detour, in a way, is an opportunity to really understand what does Marion want? Right. I, for, for, and what 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 does Ted want? Right. And anybody that is listening so many of us have just gone with this pace that has been faster and faster seemingly uh, year over year uh, more responsibility more things to do more more things to take care of and we kind of slip into something that it's almost like a screeching halt of oh my goodness maybe this is not what i want to do with my life what are you doing with the rest of this bus ride right like now you're at this point what are you doing with the rest of the bus life? Is it what I think you a lot of people? Want? I think a lot of people are really in that mode. I think most of the people I've spoken with, not even on the show, are definitely in a place where they have reevaluated yes. things and they feel like there's been a reset button. What I want to encourage people to not compare your reset button to anybody else's. Yes. And so if you've had if you've had a, a, a minor change. Uh, it's still a change. And so don't beat yourselves up over it because I think that it's super important just to give yourself the kudos for taking the step and reevaluating. All right, we're 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 out of time. So how do people reach you, Marion, until the next show, until the next great topic? What's the best way for them to reach yeah, out? You, 
you can email me at marian at weilerinternational.com or you can go on my website, which is scrolling on the bottom there, um, Weiler, weilerinternational.com and you can fill out and, and uh, schedule a 30 minute um, with me to talk about your specific situation or anything that I can do to help you. Fantastic. All right. That was awesome. Mental Great. hygiene is important, guys. So reach out to Marion. Marion, thank you so much for imparting that wisdom. It was really, really good. You have lots of love here. So we'll all respond to that, guys. Uh, Marion's really good at it. So thank you. Till next time. Thanks, Ted. I'll all see you. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Bye to everyone.